Now today we're going over the steps on how to test and replace a rear oxygen sensor. This is also known as sensor 2. So we'll go over on how to locate it, remove it, test it at home, and save yourself a ton of money doing the work yourself. Now if you're curious where to jack up the vehicle from, the front cross member, fantastic spot. Of course the vehicle is safely on jack stands and the sensor lives right back there. Now right off the bat, I'm simply going to remove the sensor from the exhaust. The reason behind that is it's easier for me to film and you'll see precisely in how to test the sensor when I have it on the bench. You can test it while it's still attached, but trust me, it's easier just to do it on the bench when you're filming this. Now, very quickly, we're dealing with sensor two. So trouble code P0141 is for the sensor that's after the catalytic converter. So typically you'll find them fastened to the converter. We're not dealing with this guy. This is known as sensor one. This is a different trouble code, different sensor altogether. Again, P0141, you'll find them typically fastened to the converter itself. Now before I remove the sensor, I just want to disconnect the harness connector. Now if you follow the wiring, it loops over the top of the transmission and this is where it connects to the vehicle, really the vehicle's computer. Now a lot of guys fight with this. As you can see, it's attached to a metal bracket. And very simply, there's a tab. A lot of people overlook this. There's a tab that you just simply press down and remove it. So it's a little hard under here, but and remove it from the bracket. So watch my index finger push in, and then there we go. So just to give you a different view, again, this is important because you don't want to crack these. Right here, you're pressing this in and then pulling out, okay? And then right here is where the sensor is connected. You press down on the harness connector. I have to put the camera down for this. Press down and then remove, pull from the body. Don't pull from the wiring. Okay, so press down and pull. Now fortunately, removing this sensor is not too difficult. On some vehicles, you may need an oxygen sensor removal tool. I'll include a link for this in the description box below in case you do need one of these off Amazon. But in this case, it's quite simple to get to. So I've sprayed down some PB Blaster on this joint right here. And I'm simply just going to use an adjustable wrench. Typically, if you have a 7 8 or a 22 millimeter size wrench, that will also work. I just like adjustable wrenches because they can fit over a little bit tighter. Let's clamp it down, make sure it's nice and snug on there. And then, there you go. Use PB Blaster, it's a big, big help. And there's the old sensor. Now fortunately, testing the sensor is very, very easy and it's also quite quick to do. All that you need is a digital multimeter. These are inexpensive. This one is $20 off Amazon. And as always, I'll include a link in the description box below. The wonderful thing with these multimeters is you can do a number of different tests. So in our case, we are doing an ohms or a resistance test. So that's simply the omega symbol on the multimeter. So this is ready to go. Now a good reading for a sensor is typically between 10 to 15 ohms in that ballpark. The colder the temperature, you'll see a higher number and vice versa. So if you tested this on the exhaust and the exhaust is a little warm, you'll find a lower number. But you should see a reading. If you don't see a reading, then the sensor is bad. It's that simple. So we plug in our leads. This comes, these two leads, they come with the multimeter. You just plug in the leads. But if you take a look at the sensor, you have four terminals, but there are only two leads from the meter. So which two terminals are you touching? Just do process of elimination. Typically, you'll find that you just have to do it in rows. So in other words, it's either the top two or the bottom two. You wouldn't crisscross it, okay? So either we'll do the top two first and then the bottom two second. Now to make it easy, because these are kind of thick, a little hard to hold at the same time. So this is simply a paper clip cut in half. You can buy what's known as a uh, probe kit, which is what I would do 
if I wasn't doing a video, but I'm doing this because I'm trying to think what you most likely have at home plus to save you money. Try to spend as little as possible. This is the most expensive thing you need. It's $20. You can get them pretty much anywhere. And so we just plug in our, so this is ready to go. It doesn't hurt the sensor. And you could simply just touch the two leads, but just to make this easy, I tend just to use, again, purchased off Amazon, a wire with two alligator ends. Just makes it easier so I don't have to hold them. You know, this makes a secure connection, ultimately. So hook up your leads, and let's see if we have a reading. Again, 10 to 15 ohms is pretty normal. So there's nothing going on here. No reading whatsoever. So let's just do this. Test the bottom two. Okay. Simple enough. One connection there, another connection there. And look at the meter. And as you can see, we have roughly 13, 15, 16 ohms worth of resistance. This is, a, this is a perfectly fine working sensor. There's no issues with this. But if you do this test and you do not see a reading, sometimes it may just be a very, very high number, but typically you just won't see anything. The sensor is bad and you'll need to replace it. Now there's one more thing we can do and that's testing if power is getting to the sensor. Now the next thing we want to check is if there's power getting to this sensor. In other words, this sensor may be perfectly fine, but you have a trouble code on your vehicle because maybe you have a wiring issue. The harness connector that plugs in here, maybe you have a break somewhere in the wire and the computer thinks this is no longer working. So let's verify that power is getting to this sensor. So we're just turning on the ignition key. Don't start the vehicle, just turn on the key. So this is the harness connector that plugs into the sensor. One of these prongs powers up the sensor. So let's verify, we should see battery voltage. So roughly 11 to 12 volts, we should see a reading. So let's find that one prong. So let's start with the top right one. Just attaching my alligator wire. The opposite end will go directly Whoops, a little hard to see upside down. There we go. Goes directly to the red lead running to the multimeter. Okay. And then let me just show you very quickly. The black lead is ground. That's any good metal point. Okay. Terrific spot is the heat shield on the exhaust. So here we go. And as you can see, we have point, point 0.3 volts. That's not it. Again, we need 11 to 12 volts. So let's try the second prong. Again, so let's try the bottom right prong, like so. Okay, come back down, get our ground, and there it is, 11 point, see how it changes, 11.2 volts. So that verifies that we are getting power to the sensor. Now if you do this test, and you test all four prongs, you're not getting power, then you have a break somewhere in the wiring. That can be really tough to uh, find. Your best bet is there's a tool called Power Probe. And I'll include a link in the description box for that tool. That tool makes it incredibly easy to find any breaks in the wiring. Now chances are if you have this trouble code, most of the times it's just the sensor. Now if you do have to replace the sensor, go with the factory sensor. Typically they're Bosch, Denso. Do not go aftermarket a local auto parts store because a lot of times they just don't last very long. Purchase the factory stuff. Okay, It's a little bit more money, but in the long run, you're doing yourself a favor. But Before you reinstall these, in fact, when you purchase a new one as well, typically they include a small package of this is high temperature anti-seize compound. It's a derivative or uh, copper is actually built into this. And you place it on the threads. Don't place it on the element because you will ruin the sensor. Make sure you place it on the threads and then just simply reinstall it on the vehicle. So we have the sensor reinstalled. Make sure you route the wiring the right way. In other words, if you have any clips, Routed over the transmission, whoops, plugged back in, this is ready to go. Do the work yourself, save yourself a ton of money, learn about your vehicle, and as always,
Thank you for watching.